the Joe Rogan experience? You I cook? Just, I don't cook much, no. No? No. And I don't eat anything. You know, listen, I eat Not steak. much or I sometimes? Eat, I, could, I could do something. I could make breakfast. Like what? What's your go-to? I could go-to? make fucking eggs. I could, you know, I could, I could do something here if I got. Did you ever work as a cook, like a short order cook? That uh, kind of thing? You were a clam shucker. Right? I, I worked at Umberto's Clam House when I was in high school. Did you I used what to be that? able to open clams. You know, when you would order, mm-hmm. I used to be incredible at them. Yeah. Umberto's Clam House was where they killed Joe Gallo. Oh wow! But they had a second one in Brooklyn where I grew up. And, uh, no, but Gallo was killed on Mo- uh, Mulberry Street. Mulberry right? Street. There was one on Mulberry Street, on Berto's Clam yeah. House. It became famous after that. And then there was one in Brooklyn. And I was like 15. And I, as a, we used to hang around on the corner. And they were building it. And there was like a, a guy. You know, We were all hanging around getting into fucking trouble. A bunch of kids. And he pulled out a big wad of money one day. I mean, like fucking hundreds. And he said, come here. Come on, get the fuck out of here. Take them to the movies. Wow. Back then, a movie was probably a dollar, you know? And I said, no, 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 I want a job. I don't want your money. And I gave him the money. He was Matty the Horse, which was a big wise guy's brother, Joe. Wow. And he kind of became like a mentor. You know, he was like a really good guy. He gave me a job. I learned how to open clams, bake clams, uh, clams for the linguine and clams, raw clams on a half shell, you know, for the, Squeeze the lemon, the thing. I, you know. Did being around a lot of those guys when you were younger, did that help you when you were in The Sopranos? Did it help you, like, sort of, because you knew people like that? Yeah. I grew up in that neighborhood. Like, where I grew up in Bensonhurst, Brooklyn, at the time in the 70s, was all a big mob enclave. Big. They were everywhere. And you didn't even know who they were. You know, like uh, Joey's uncle. And, and this is uh, a guy that I went to Little League with, wind up doing 25 years for murder. And they were just in the neighborhood. They were just, you know. Uh, so, yeah, I I knew that world. I wasn't in that world. I went to college, I you know, but I knew that world. I, I know people. I have friends. Uh, uh, you know, it was just that kind of a place, you know, where you just knew them. And somebody was just telling me two days ago, the guy— uh, owned a store, like an Italian deli, a ravioli store, and I didn't know that he was a hitman. And he sent me an article. And he murdered in two Bessonhurst? fucking guys in Coney Island, yeah. This guy named Pete. And I had no idea about that. And uh, I said, really? He lived up the block from me. I didn't know that. Because, <laughs> you know, when you were a kid, you yeah, know, there was so. like, you know, he was coaching the baseball team. Then you found out later. I said, I didn't know the guy was a wise guy, like a real guy. And they were everywhere. They sold fireworks and you know, it was that whole thing. It was all Italian American, you know, and it's changed now. You know, it's it's, it's not a little bit of that, but not as much as it used to well, be. Well, when John Gotti was in his heyday, it was a very strange time for like, Italian Americans in New York because there, that whole area, like when he would have those block parties, and and you know, people there was part of the the people that would love him. Oh yeah, love that to this day. Yeah. To this day, absolutely. You know, I was gone. You know, I left uh, for Vegas in 79, 80. So I was gone through all the 80s. You know, I was in Vegas with those wise guys. You're right. And right. I knew some of them. We talked about it last time mm-hmm. I was here. The yeah. Pesci character, mm-hmm. uh, Tony Spalaccio, who was always very nice to me. I mean, he was <laughs> giving me a 20 every time yeah, I saw him. Lucky. He's all right in my book. Uh, but it's interesting, like the the Gotti character, him as a person was very strange. Do you know his grandson is a badass MMA fighter? Oh no, I didn't. Know his that. grandson, John Gotti the Third, I think it is, is a legit MMA fighter. He's really fucking good. He's shredded. The kid looks wow. like a fucking killer. I mean, he looks like an MMA fighter, covered in tattoos. I think he's undefeated, and I think he's got the majority of his fights, if not all of them, are by knockout. Wow. It's kind of crazy. Listen, people love him. I, I never met John Gotti. He did a lot of good for a lot of people. He Listen, you could only judge someone by how they treat you. Right. You know what I mean? Because people go, well, how could you, you know, blah, blah, blah. Hey, he was good to a lot of people. But he was known to be a good fighter, too, John. But John was? Yeah. yeah. He can't, That's how he kind of came up. He was very good with his hands. He was, you know, toe-to-toe and, and was pretty nifty as a fighter. Yeah. He was very public, though. Yeah, that was the thing that the old Later, guard yeah, didn't yeah, when like. He became, but yeah. he was flashy when he became the boss. He was like this guy that like made a big show of who he was, 
versus a lot of these guys like Vincent the Chin would act crazy oh, yeah. and walk around in a bathrobe. Well, Gotti was it. like Al Capone. Yeah. yeah. yeah but at least he yeah. enjoyed himself. These other guys, uh, some of these <laughs> other guys, he enjoyed himself. He was out to restaurants, good yeah. look. He had movie star looks. At least he enjoyed himself. He had a nice family. Yeah. Some of these guys are holed up. They have millions of dollars and they live in like some shit one bedroom tenement. Like it's Uncle right. Junior. Like Uncle Junior. <laughs> right. He lives like this shitty life. He's getting hundreds of thousands right. here and there. It's like, why are you living like that? You might as well go out and enjoy it, right? Right. He, yeah. And they still get caught. Even the, even the guys yeah. who live like shit, they still get caught. Those old timers, you know, those old timers used to just, I don't know what they did with the money. Well, they were trying to avoid prosecution. Yeah, but. Didn't work out. Almost every mobster, unfortunately, uh, winds up dead or in jail. Yeah. Yeah. You know? I mean <laughs>